Hello and welcome. I am Max Mathias. So today we're going to talk about uh, economics, right? And what is economics? So what is economics? Very nice uh, slide transition there. If you haven't, you know, took an, taken an economics class before, what I want you to do is stop for a second and try and define it yourself, right? When I say economics, what comes to mind? Now, for a lot of you, I'm sure it's things like supply and demand, business, maybe finance, stocks, a whole bunch of things like that. To kind of tell my own story, uh, when I was in high school, going into my sophomore year, I had the opportunity to take AP economics, and I was like, I don't want to do that. Economics is business. I don't want to take a business class, right? So it wasn't until my freshman year of college that I actually took economics. So while business or you know supply and demand, finance, stocks, all of those things are part of econ, that is not the definition of economics itself. So to give you a textbook definition, economics is the study of the allocation of scarce resources, and sometimes you'll see people tack on with unlimited wants uh, at the end there. Now, as you can see, that word scarce is highlighted red. Why is that? Well, it's the most important word in that definition. And so why is this idea of scarcity uh, the most important word? Well, economists view everything as scarce. I'm also having this thing where everyone's scarce so many times, it's starting to look like it's not a word anymore, uh, but I know it is. So what do we mean that economists view everything as scarce? Well, you know, not only do we think that um, some, you know, things that you encounter every day, and I'll talk about a little bit more about scarcity on the next slide, but the idea of viewing everything as scarce puts you in this mindset where that you have to make a choice, right? With everything you do, you can't have it all. So, you, you know, a lot of times, imagine every choice that you're making is a fork in the road. You can go left or you can go right. Very rarely in life can you essentially split the difference and do both. So, uh, you know, with scarcity comes choice. So I'll give you my simplified definition, a little bit easier. Economics is a study of choice, right? Because we think scarcity is everywhere, you have to make choices. Econ is the study of those choices. So we as economists want to know who is making that choice, what were their options, ultimately what did they choose, why did they make that choice, and then what are the implications of that choice. So, you know, we as an economist want to know things like, well, you know, who is making the choice? So is it a person? Is it a government? Is it two governments interacting with each other? What were their options? Uh, so it's important to know, you know, okay, ultimately we observe them doing one thing, but, you know, what other options did they have? And, you know, ultimately knowing their choice sets means understanding what they're giving up, right? What's scarce for them? Obviously, we want to know what did they choose. Uh, we have theories about why they make that choice. Generally, econ is pretty simple when it comes to why did they make this choice. We generally think people or countries or anything like that make choices because it's in their best interest to, right? They are better off making that choice. Uh, rather than the other choices available to them. And then for, uh, you know, what are the implications of this choice? Not that important when we're studying necessarily uh, individuals making somewhat trivial decisions like going and shopping, but when governments are making choices, right? Passing laws, passing bills, uh, when, you know, certain all, you know, talk from my own experience, when states are choosing how much to, you know, allocate to higher education spending, I want to know what are the implications of that choice, uh, right. And so that's where a lot of economic research comes from is, hey, we observe, you know, this entity making this choice. We want to know, well, what are the implications of that choice? How is it affecting people? So when do we encounter scarcity? The short answer is all the time. Right. So you on a daily level, our income is scarce. Right. So we spread the money that we take home over groceries, you know, housing, whether that be rent or a mortgage, our hobbies. I'm an avid golfer, uh, you know, and I also rock climb, things like that. So those are things that cost money that I have to ultimately, you know, spend money on. The list goes on and on and on, right? If only income was, you know, not scarce, life would be so much better. But ultimately, we have to make choices when it comes to that. Uh, government budgets, right? So, you know, when governments are deciding to, you know, finalize a budget, whether it's a state government, a local government, or the federal government in the United States, they have to allocate spending across departments programs and basically choosing, you know, to put a dollar towards military is a dollar that can't be put towards education. So that's the idea, right? We want to know what are their choices and ultimately, you know, how does putting, say, more money in military versus uh, education, right? What are the implications of that choice? Businesses as well, right? When it comes to hiring workers, a lot of times, right, they can't hire all the workers in the world. That's not profitable for them. So they need to, you know, pick and choose who they're hiring for what positions ultimately to try and maximize their profit, 
marketing products, right? They have a you know marketing budget that they need to uh, think about. How do we best reach consumers like that? So the point is whether you know you're an individual person, a large government, a business, anywhere in between, you're encountering scarcity. You're making choices. That's why we care. One thing I do want to draw your attention to that maybe you haven't thought about through an economic lens is your time, right? So there are 24 hours in a day, seven days a week, 365 days in a year, not to be morbid, but also you're only on earth for a set amount of time. So basically any time that you spend doing one thing is necessarily time you can't spend doing something else. So the way to kind of think about this is this idea of opportunity cost. So what you give up to get something. And so a way to think about this is, well, if I wasn't watching this video right now, what would I be doing, right? So if I wasn't in my office right now recording, I'd probably be, I don't know, taking a nap or playing video games. Whatever I would be doing, that is my opportunity cost for doing what I am doing right now, right? Since you can't be two places at once, every single thing you do has an opportunity cost associated with it. It's important to note that uh, it's the next best alternative, it's not all of the potential things, right? So opportunity cost is not all of the things you could have been doing with your time, it's what you would have been doing, right? So as a student, let's say you're doing homework, cool, the opportunity cost of doing homework is, I don't know, watching TV, something like that, but it's just what you would be doing, it's not all the possible things you could be doing. So that is a very quick intro to the definition of economics and also scarcity. Uh, you know, we're just dipping our toe in here a little bit. Maybe this will give you an idea of how economists think and ultimately, you know, how we try and analyze these problems. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, uh, consider liking, subscribing so that I can increase visibility. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, let me know and I'll see you next time.